Welcome to the second part of your cells and tissues presentation. Cells and tissues together is quite a big, chunky system, so I've divided it into two sections. And between them, you will have, if you take the ITEC exam, you'll have five questions on cells and tissues in your exam paper. Histology is the term given for the study of tissues. Histopathology is a department at the hospital that I used to be a manager of that investigates tissues under a microscope. Cytology is the study of cells. So cyto means cell, histo means tissues. So histology is the study of tissues. There are four types of tissues in the body, and I'd like you to repeat their names after me. The first one we'll talk about is epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscle tissue, and nervous tissue. The body is made up of a variety of these different tissues and throughout your whole 13 presentations of the body then you will be discussing the difference in muscle tissue, nervous tissue, connective tissue, epithelial tissue and where they're present and what their job is. So these are the four main types of tissue. So epithelium is divided into two types. There's simple and compound epithelium. The simple epithelium is divided into squamous, cubicle and columnar. And that is divided into the shapes of the different tissues. So squamous is squat, cubicle is square, Columnar is column shaped. Then we have compound epithelium, which is divided into stratified and transitional epithelium. These are also squamous, cubical, or columnar in shape, but they are stratified and transitional. So, two types of epithelial tissue, simple and compound. Simple epithelium is only one layer thick and it's got no membrane and it lines and covers all the organs of the body. It's very slippery and smooth so that's why it's lining and allowing the contents of the organs to slip and slide and it doesn't catch it's nice and smooth. Some of the epithelial cells are also called goblet cells. Now, inside a goblet cell, you have mucus, and mucus is only found in simple epithelial cells. Now, these goblets contain mucus, and mucus is for sliming the body. So, it helps to keep things slippery. Some of these goblet cells are also ciliated cells. So some of the epithelial cells can be hairy. So ciliated cells can be hairy. And some of those you might find up your nose, you might find in the fallopian tubes, wafting the eggs as they pass out of the ovaries towards the uterus. So simple epithelial cells could be mu containing mucus, which is a goblet cell, and they also can be ciliated, which is hairy. So this is going to help things pass through. And in the nose, we, we know that the nose airway, when we come to the respiratory system, is warming and moistening the air as it comes into the body. And that is also helped by the mucus produced by these goblet cells. 
So there are three types of epithelium. They're defined by their size and shape. So we have squamous, cuboid, and columnar or column shaped. The first type of simple epithelium is squamous. Now this is squat, flat pavement cells, a bit like crazy paving. It's got a membranous base and it lines and covers the organs so that it keeps everything inside the organs nice and smooth and flat. And the places we might find this are the heart, the blood, the lymph vessels, blood vessels, alveoli. So you might get asked where these types of tissues can be found. So we're going to remember it's the heart, the blood vessels, the lymph vessels, and the alveoli are a good example of where you're going to find squamous epithelium. The second type of simple epithelium is cuboidal or cubed. This lines and covers the organs, the same as the squamous epithelium. But we would find this in the kidneys, the ovaries, the thyroid gland. And it's a bit thicker than the squamous. So in the kidneys, the ovaries, we don't want to have urine um, or fluid sort of floating about. So it's a bit thicker than the squamous epithelium. So we need to learn about the kidneys, the ovaries and the thyroid. That's So the third type is columnar, and this is rectangular or column shaped. So it's a lot thicker um, than the other types of epithelium. And we can find this in the stomach, the intestines and the urethra. So as you can imagine, we want a thicker lining in the stomach because it's acidic. And we need to make sure that acid doesn't get through the lining of the stomach. The intestines, we've got a lot of feces and chyma passing through the intestines. The urethra, we've got the urine. So we want to make sure that this is a nice thick layer, even though it's only one layer thick. You also have ciliated columnar simple epithelium. And this is hair like, as we've discussed before. And we can find this in places like the nose, where we need the hair to filter dust and foreign bodies, in the trachea, and also in the fallopian tubes, where it helps to push the ovaries down the fallopian tubes towards the uterus. So this is simple columnar epithelium. So now we move on to the second type of epithelium. This is compound epithelium. No longer single layered, these are many layered and they don't have a membranous base so they can stack on top of one another. And you would find that they're squamous, cuboidal, but they're mainly columnar and they're many layered. So the job of compound epithelium is no longer lining and covering the organs. This is about protection and elasticity. There are two types of compound epithelium. One of them is stratified, which tends to be a lot more protective, like the hair and the nails. And then we have transitional, which is a lot more elastic. 
So the transitional is shape changing. So many layers, mainly columnar, no base, very different from your simple epithelium. So the first type of stratified compound epithelium we come across, the first one is keratinized. So when you have keratin, it adds strength and color. So for instance, the places that we find keratinized compound epithelium are in dry places like the hair, the skin and the nails. And the keratin tends to protect these parts of the body. So the hair is protected by the keratin, the skin and the nails, and it's dry. So keratinized, stratified compound epithelium, that's the first type of this compound epithelium. So the second type of stratified compound epithelium um, is non-keratinized. So there's no keratin in this type of epithelium, but it is wet. So it's stratified compound epithelium. This is wet and it can be found in the mouth, in wet places really, the mouth, the eye and the esophagus. So again, this is a protecting compound epithelium and this is non-keratinized and wet, whereas the first type of stratified compound epithelium was keratinized and dry and found in nails, hair and skin. So this is the second type, it's stratified compound epithelium, non-keratinized and wet, found in the mouth, eye and the esophagus. So the second type of compound epithelium is transitional. And as the name suggests, transitional means that it's changing, it's um, expandable, it's waterproof. So transitional compound epithelium is found in places where we have fluid. So the bladder, for instance, we need the bladder to be expandable so that we can hold the urine. We can, it's shape changing. It's also waterproof. So obviously we don't want the urine leaking out all over the body. And the same with the uterus. I mean, the uterus is the size of your fist. It's very small until it develops a fetus into a baby and obviously it needs to be shape changing then, expandable and waterproof because of the amniotic fluid that the baby is floating in. So transitional compound epithelium is shape changing, waterproof, expandable and we find it in the bladder and the uterus. Connective tissue is the second of our types of tissue. We had epithelial, now we have connective. Now connective tissue binds, protects, supports the body, connects from one area to another, holds organs in place, stores energy reserves in the form of fat. So this is a completely different type of tissue. It's no longer covering and lining the organs. It's no longer protecting and elastic. It's a con completely different tissue. Connective tissue, we find it all over the body. Binding, protecting, supporting, connecting, holding the organs in place and storing the energy reserves in the form of fat. So we have seven types of connective tissue. We have cartilage, bone, adipose tissue, areolar tissue, fibrous tissue, blood is also a connective tissue and so is lymph. So they're the seven types of connective tissue that we're going to discuss in this presentation. This diagram clearly shows the different types of connective tissue. You notice that blood and lymph is not on this one, but the five other types of tissue are. 
So we have cartilage, bone, adipose, areolar and fibrous. So cartilage is divided into fibrocartilage and hyaline cartilage. And then we have yellow elastic fibrocartilage and white fibrocartilage. Bone adipose tissue areolar are quite straightforward. And then again, the fibrous tissue, just to make life a bit more complicated, that divides into yellow elastic and white fibrous tissue as well. So it always strikes me when you're learning about biology and the anatomy and physiology, how unimaginative they were when they named different parts of the body so similarly. So we have white fibrous, which is um, very strong white fibrous tissue. Yellow elastic, as it sounds, is sort of bungee jumping type material. So again, we have fibrocartilage and we have fibrous tissue, um, both divided into yellow elastic and white fibrous tissue. So cartilage, this is a connective tissue and fibrocartilage in particular, we have white fibrous tissue and we have yellow elastic tissue. So the white fibrous are shock absorbers and they're to protect the knee, vertebrae, hip, shoulder, to help reduce the amount of shock that the body gets. So if somebody bumps into you on a rugby pitch, your knees, vertebrae, hips and shoulders are going to be reinforced with this white fibrous tissue. Yellow elastic allows movement. And although we don't literally, well, some people can move their ears, but that's using different muscles. Um, but we do allow movement in the ears to capture sound waves. So the earlobes in particular are very sort of fleshy and allow movement. Um, the epiglottis, which is that flap in the larynx that allows that stops food going down the wrong way. And also the blood vessels need to um, dilate and contract. So we need some movement in the blood vessels as well. So yellow elastic tissue allows movement. That's the fibrocartilage. Um, and we also have white fibrous tissue, which is the shock absorbers in the bones. That's also fibrocartilage as well. So hyaline cartilage is a smooth sort of bluish tissue which covers the articulating surfaces of some bones. So particularly the bones um, where there is a ball and socket joint, they have a covering of bluish tissue, which is hyaline cartilage. So the job of hyaline cartilage is going to be protecting and connecting the trachea in the throat is made of incomplete rings of hyaline cartilage and the larynx and the bronchial tubes are also protected by um, the hyaline cartilage as you can imagine your larynx your trachea your bronchial tubes you want them to have a stiff rigid protection otherwise as soon as somebody grabbed you by the throat or you had some sort of compression on the throat the bronchial tubes and larynx would just collapse and you wouldn't be able to breathe so we need to have this hyaline cartilage to protect the ends of bones and also to give stiffness and rigidity to the organs that go through the throat Bone is also a connective tissue made up of osteocytes, so that's the bone cells, along with collagen and strengthened by calcium. 
So we have two types of bone. We've got compact bone, which tends to be the shaft of the bone. That's very solid. And then we have the cancellous bone, which is very spongy and honeycombed and has holes in it, which gives it a lot of tensile strength. So bone is another type of connective tissue. Adipose connective tissue. This is fat, really. So it consists of large fat globules with areolar tissue in between. And adipose tissue helps to maintain body temperature. It supports the kidneys. The kidneys are surrounded by adipose tissue to keep them warm and also to protect them. We have adipose tissue around the eyes, um, around the scapula and the neck to help protect that, and also the walls of the blood vessels. We have adipose tissue as well. So adipose tissue are large globules of fat as well as, well as having areolar tissue around it. Areolar connective tissue is the most common of the connective tissues altogether. It consists of a matrix like a sort of net or mesh of fibroblasts with elastic and collagen fibers in between. So it's very strong and it's known as the sort of packing material of the body. So if there's a space in the body that needs supporting, um, then you're going to have areolar tissue in there. So under the skin, between the muscles, supporting the blood vessels and the nerves in the alimentary canal, it provides elasticity and tensile strength to the body. So as well as being part of adipose tissue with those fat globules, it's also a packing material that you find all around the body. The fibrous tissue is also two types, white fibrous and then we've got yellow elastic as well. And this is a dense tissue with little elasticity. So it's made of close, closely packed bundles of collagen and is very, very strong. Because we use it for things like ligaments, fascia and tendons, the last thing we need is for our ligaments to be elastic and moving and stretching. So it tends to be quite dense with no elasticity, but very strong. So the periosteum of the bone, the outside layer of the bone is made of white fibrous tissue. The kidneys, the outside of the kidneys are white fibrous. The ligaments, the fascia and tendons within the muscles are all made of white fibrous tissue. Lymph nodes and parts of the brain, which need to be very strong and um, able to protect itself with white fibrous tissue. Yellow elastic fibrous tissue, again, is an elastic tissue which extends and recoils and is found in the shape changing um, organs. So things like the walls of the blood vessels, the stomach, the lungs, the epiglottis, the bladder, and the external ears, which we've discussed as well. So fibrocartilage can be found in some of these places as well as the yellow elastic fibrous tissue. Blood is also described as a liquid connective tissue. And it consists of the erythrocytes, which are the red blood cells, the leukocytes, which are the white blood cells, and the thrombocytes, which are the platelets. They're the ones responsible for helping our blood to clot. We'll cover more about the blood when we get to the circulatory system, but let's give you a little bit of a head start. The erythrocytes, as we said, are the red blood cells. They're circular, biconcave, and nucleated, and they're formed in the bone marrow. They only live for 120 days, and then they're broken down in the spleen, and then 
taken to the liver where they are then recycled as bile. The oxygen is carried in the haemoglobin in the cells of the red blood cells, the erythrocytes, and the carbon dioxide is removed from the cell. So those are the erythrocytes, the red blood cells. So leukocytes are the white blood cells in the body and leuco is white. Leukorrhea is a white discharge. So you might come across leuco quite a lot within um, learning biology and anatomy and physiology. Our white blood cells are our army, if you like, the army, the navy, the RAF. They are different types of white blood cells that fight off infection, bacteria, viruses, and attack and devour these microbes with, within the body. So phagocytes, devour the microbes, the bacteria and any cell debris and that is then stored in the vacuoles if you remember your cells um, and then eliminated through the cell wall. T lymphocytes provide us with immunity and they are produced in the thymus gland. So white blood cells, different types of blood cells that fight off disease and protect us from invasion from bacteria and viruses. But we'll go into this in more depth when we do the cardiovascular system. third type of blood cell we have in the blood is the thrombocytes and these are also called platelets and they're very irregular cells a bit like gravel very small non-nucleated discs which promote the clotting of blood in the body so they are thrombocytes so lymph tissue is also a connective tissue and the lymph system is all about fighting disease and destroying bacteria. The lymph tissue makes up the lymphatic system and it's found in lots of different places all over the body. So the lymph nodes, the spleen, the tonsils, the appendix and the intestines. And I would say that this is one of the questions that I take like the most what is made of lymph tissue and it's usually the tonsils the appendix and the spleen that they have as an answer so I would make sure that you know what different parts of the body are made of lymph tissue A nerve cell is called a neuron and nerve tissue is called neuroglia. Neuroglia is a connective nerve tissue made up of lots and lots, billions in fact, of neurons. Nerves run in one direction and neurons transmit messages, signals if you like, electrical signals, impulses, and they travel through the neuron from one end to the other. <laughs> 